Welcome back. Today, I'm going to show to you how to build the very best base in the entire video game. I've had some of the most skilled players in the entirety of the Rust community tell me consistently, this base is impossible to raid. What this is a collaboration of lots of different bases that I've seen and one that I've developed over a ton of different wipes to basically make into one of the best bases in the entire game. I truly feel like this is probably one of the best solo designs there is. You can also use this in a small group, but I wouldn't suggest going over a group of three. Now, there's a couple different variations to this base. I'm going to I'm going to show you two, one of which is a very light double bunker design, which is the one we're looking at right now. And another one I'm going to show you later on in the video is the far extended triple bunker version. So let's get right into it. Now, this base in its current design and form is going to cost you the following amount of resources. 5,000 wood, 13,500 stone, 4,000 metal frags, and 165 high qual. In addition to the resources, you're also going to want around six gears to make garage doors and three metal shelves. I highly suggest BPing metal hatchet if you're going with this base design as well. Although you can get by with using double sheet metal doors in this base, I highly suggest using garage doors. Using sheet metal swinging doors inside this base is going to make it a logistical nightmare for you and very time inefficient to get inside and out. When you're ready to build this base, there's two things to keep in mind. The gradient is very important when building bunkers. When honeycombing this base out, you're going to want a relatively flat area. The double bunker takes a lot less space than the triple bunker, but it's still important to do so on a flat piece of ground. I'm going to show you how to build this base step by step as if you were under pressure. So not like you were just on a base by yourself. I'm going to show you how to build this as if there was a bunch of people running around and you were afraid to have an inventory full of resources on you. So here's what we're going to do first. The first thing we're going to build is the actual bunker itself. Now, again, pay attention to the gradient. Make sure you build high enough to make sure that you can, you know, line everything up and the base isn't fucking lopsided on one end. So just like this, okay, quick and easy. Two raised foundations here, walls. Now it's really important you place your TC correctly. If you don't, nothing will work in your bunker. And you also, if you're planning on playing in a group, make sure you get whoever you're on your team authorization as quickly as possible, or they won't be able to get it later on without you taking a lot of stuff out of boxes and replacing a lot of things. So this will save you time down the road. So next step, we're going to make this bunker entirely high quality. As well as the two foundations. Now this, this you can leave stone. I always do. Now, half hole around the top. Also stone for now. Now, you, you may want to come back to this in future and upgrade this, but for now, this is how we do it. So, right here. Frame. Frame. I do sheet metal on this, and I always do sheet metal on these wall frames. The reason being, if someone splashes your roof and you have stone, there's a very high chance, especially if they're using HDLs, it'll actually damage your frames through the ceiling. I've seen garage doors collapse, and due to the fact this is a cylindrical base design, you can lose all your doors if you're not careful. So, just set it up this way, you'll thank me later. So, once you have this set up, you can kind of breathe a little bit of fresh air. Now you don't have to worry about someone running in and killing you right away. So, next step is putting your half walls up. The second one could kind of be a bit of a pain. Once you have it up, go ahead and demolish the second one. Make sure you have this facing the proper direction and armor it. Just like that. This is now a lockable bunker. Once we put a half wall right here and a floor on top of this foundation, this is going to be a solid piece of steel. No one's going to be able to jump down here without breaking through the floor first. The next step is going to be extending the bunker out and making a complete design. So, sunken foundation here. Sunken triangular foundation here. Then another sunken foundation as well. This is going to be a second bunker. Same exact routine on the first one. 
Half full, half full, delete the, the lower one. And now add another raised foundation here. Finish it off with one here. You have another opportunity for sunken loot as well. And now go ahead and wall these off. Add some half holes on the top. Now, you can start by making these open bunkers stone. I typically reserve these for really low quality loot, as you'll see in, the, in later in the video. And this one here is not exactly that important either. I always upgrade these to metal as soon as I can, but right off the bat, constructing your base, it's not entirely that important. Now, this second bunker, I typically start by sheet metaling. Again, there's lower quality loot in this, so it's not as important to have this as high qual. However, if you have the resources to do it, why not? Upgrade the top honeycombing to stone. And I advise you to upgrade this to sheet metal. You can make this stone as well as this bottom piece. The next step you're gonna wanna do, put a wall here, upgrade this to stone, and another wall in the back. Now the last step, this is gonna be your exterior door. Now depending upon how high this is, you may want a foundation under this, but for now we're just gonna put the wall frame up. Leave this further exterior one stone. Now, the last point, we're going to put a roof on. Or I'd, I recommend you to make this ceiling sheet metal. At least this cylindrical area. The reason being, it's harder to splash the garage doors. Upgrade all the wall frames for steel. These are going to be future garage doors. And this is what you should have to this point. If you've made it this far without Timmy and Jimmy going deep on your base with double barrels. Boy, I'll draw my Dick Tracy snub nose 38 and I'll... It's time to throw up some doors. Now, a furthermost exterior sheet metal door is preferred. You do not want to ever use garage doors as your furthermost exterior door because they're far too slow to open and close and you'll likely get yourself killed if you're under pressure. Now, this is kind of your safety door here, or a garage door up here. Now you have a relatively safe airlock. Even if someone is door camping at this point, you know, they're not going to get too far when they open. So moving forward and deeper into the base, just proceed adding more garage doors. You remember we added these two over the TC when we first started building, so we don't need any there. Add another garage door here. Now it's really important that you put a garage door here first. Um, you can put an armored double door here, but that's gonna eliminate the ability for you to put a workbench here in the future. So keep that in mind. So at this point, we have a total of five garage doors and one sheet metal sweetening door. So at this point, we have a total of six doors. We have one double sheet metal door on our furthermost exterior, and we have five interior garage doors. The next step is adding some functional storage space to this base. Now, this is a very important aspect to this. Make sure you do this part correctly. Now, again, face your TC in this direction, so towards the right side from the back left corner. Take your metal shelves. Now, this is absolutely required for this base. You can't do this using half walls. You will not be able to access the top boxes, so metal shelves are absolutely required for this base. Place it right here. And this is where you want to authorize anybody who's going to have auth on your base at this point. Do this now so you don't have to take things out of your boxes and replace them later in the wipe. So, first things first, let's put our boxes down. There's not really any correct way to do this. You can do this any way you want. But just try and uh, stuff them as far into the back as you can. Just like that. Now the next step, once you have these two boxes down, put your sleeping bag down. It helps to stand inside the bottom of the shelf to do this, it's just a lot easier. Place it as far and as close to your TC as you possibly can. 
and I recommend naming this bag Bunker 1. Now, the last two steps. Place your last two boxes. Again, you might, you're probably going to want to try and hug the left side as close as you can. It just helps you get in and out of the bunker a lot easier. Done. So now, as you see, we have a totally locked high qual bunker. We've got four boxes inside, and you can also use a drop box on this half wall, um, although that may hinder your ability to jump in and out. Now, at this point, you can choose whether you want to put another drop loot in this side or this side. There's really no right way to do this. You can put furnaces and workbench here, or you can do it on this side. It just really depends. Now, personally, I like putting it here because this is kind of serves as a drop box and a storage space for lower tier loot and stuff you want to kind of grab and go. You don't want to have to jump, go into the back of your base to get it. So same kind of thing here. There's not really much secret to this. Now, there is two different aspects and styles you can do this. I'll show you, show you both of them. Now, the first style would be maximum storage space. So if you're just trying to fit as many boxes as you can in here, this is the way to do this. Leave this open. Put your shelf down. And start placing your boxes. Now, you want to drag these as far towards you as you can. You won't be able to access them as easier if they're pushed right up against the wall. You're never going to need to jump inside this little room. So this is pretty much the best way to do it. Now, these ones on top, you can place against the wall because they're easier to access. But again, bottom ones, you kind of want to pull forward. Just like that. So, if you can kind of guess what I'm placing here, this would be like seeds, food, tools, stuff like that. This would be meds. This would be tier one armor, things like that. And then this last box would be like shotguns, revolvers, things like that. Tier one loot, tier one guns. Stuff that you can grab easily as you're going in and out of your base. Now, the second style to do this is with a unlootable loot room style. And all you have to do is place a low wall here. What this is going to do is anyone who breaks these boxes, they're not going to be able to loot them afterwards. Now, if you're wondering why I haven't placed a ceiling here to this point, it's there isn't really any reason. You can go ahead and do it at any point. This is basically what it's going to look like when you're done. You can upgrade this at any point, but leave this open for now. I'm going to explain why in a minute. So as you can see, you can access two boxes now, but you can't access the bottom. It just depends how bad you want Timmy and Jimmy to go to get your pumpkins. And I'll blast my way out. So moving forward, and if you haven't already noticed, I do go for the max loot. I don't go for the, the two unlootable boxes, personally. It's just not that big of a deal if someone gets my pumpkins. Anyways, at this point, you want to add another bag. Probably close to your door. This is a good spot to put it. I recommend labeling this home bag or top bunk or whatever you want to call it. Now, the next step, add another loot room into your bunker. Now, this is typically where I save resources, uh, extra resources, you know, lower tier guns, things that aren't as high value for obvious reasons. This is right now sheet metal. You can upgrade this to high qual, um, basically at your earliest convenience. It does cost about 160 high qual to upgrade your bunker. Place down your boxes. Place a bag inside of your bunker. And I recommend you naming this bag Bunker 2. Easiest way to keep track. So at this point, you're looking around, you have some extra spots. Now, this is where I personally think is the best place to keep the workbench in the two bunker design. You can put it down here if you want, but I like it being up here. This is kind of wasted space other otherwise, and this is just a really easy way to kind of keep max space efficiency with this design. So stand where I'm standing now and drag it back and then push it forward into this back left corner as much as you can. It doesn't matter if the corner is clipping. Just remember, once this workbench is down, do not, and I repeat, do not remove that last door. You'll never be able to get it on again. So there you go. I've never been able to fit three underneath this, or two small boxes underneath the level three at this angle, but if you can figure it out somehow, I'm all ears. Anyways. Now you have your workbench, you've got this kind of redundant little spot. You can also put a little turret up here if you're really cute, but for now, it's pretty good. Door still closes, everything's still secure, doesn't prohibit movement in the least. So the next thing you can do, you can choose to make this another little loot room if you want, but um, I just leave it as like a kind of a furnace room usually. So you have enough for a lot of furnaces down here. There's really no limit to how you set these up, but I usually just put like a couple for now. 
two of those right here. Something like that. There you go. Repair bench. And you got a couple, you know, a little, a few spots for small boxes and whatever else. Speaking of small boxes, I really feel it's important to keep two inside your bunkers, right at the corner of this triangle, kind of as an oh shit set. Now, basically, if your base is about to be attacked or if you're getting online, you have very, very little time to bunker your base. So what I have in here at all times is a building plan, a hammer, and the resources necessary to instantly bunker and upgrade this base. This is what your base should look like to this point. Now, obviously, this is a big no-no, okay? You do not want armored walls exposed to vision like this. Anyone walking by your base who sees this is going to know exactly where your TC is and exactly where your loot is. This is why it's really important to honeycomb this base with stone or when you have the resources metal. Uh, make it all uniform and don't give away entirely where your bunker may be located because looking top down, it's pretty tough to identify where it may be. So, if you've probably already guessed, our next inevitable step is to honeycomb the exterior of this base. Now, I've even built this base at night just uh, to reduce the chance of anybody walking by and seeing this when I'm in, it's under construction. This is a dead giveaway where your bunker is located, okay? So don't let anybody see this. Try and construct this base stealthily. Try and keep a low profile while you're doing it. You don't want people walking by. So again, just basic honeycombing. All we're trying to do is just sort of we give a uniform look to the base right now. We are trying to hide the armored walls and we're trying to hide the sheet metal. All right. So last step, just add some walls. Now, this last little bit, you can kind of leave this up to your own imagination. There's lots of different ways you can build this out. Now, firstly, I like having a bit of an airlock on this. There's a really easy opportunity to honeycomb this last bunker and combine with an airlock. Pretty simple. You do a lowered foundation. Triangle here. And maybe another tri or another square here. And then with a combination of wall frames, you can probably have a shop front here, shop front here, a door, and another shop front. Just giving you a little more vision when you come in and out of your base, a little more storage space, and a little more security. So here's where we're at now after all the honeycombing, after all the little exterior upgrades. Now it gives the base a much more uniform design. It's a lot harder for someone walking by to just immediately identify where your loot room is. That's what you want. You want to give mystery to this. You want to make it look like a challenge. Um, right now, this base is still a relatively easy raid, but I'm going to show you how to actually utilize the bunker and lock your loot room up. So if you're still wondering why I've left this open, the reason is simple. I like to go through here and upgrade all of these to sheet metal. The reason I don't do it right away is because you actually can't access some of these back pieces if you honeycomb the exterior entirely. So it's good to wait. However, when you're shutting things down, especially for the first night, you're, you don't want to leave it all open like this. So... Plug in some walls, and you want to face these walls away from the inside of your base. What this is serving is basically eliminating anyone from dropping through your honeycombing and just soft siding in. So what this is going to do is give someone, you know, a little more cost to their raid if they try and blow in through the honeycombing. I highly suggest upgrading these to metal at least. As soon as you have the resources to do so, just start upgrading the entire core of your base. So if you've watched to this point and you don't have a thorough understanding on how stability bunkers work, I'm going to show you. Right now, if you're looking at the base, you probably think it's a pretty stupid design. You're wondering, well, how is this secure? You just have, a, you know, one roof to loot or a couple doors to loot. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. Now, this is how the system works. Before we do this and before you do this especially, there is one crucial ingredient, two rather, that you need inside of your bunkers before you bunker them. A, the sleeping bag. If you don't have a spawn point inside your bunker, after you bunker it, that's a wrap. You're never going to get back inside. Number two, you absolutely have to have, at the very least, metal hatchets. You can use stone, but you're going to go through a lot of resources. I highly suggest metal hatchets, bladed weapons, you know, melee tools that you save throughout the wipe. This is what they're good for. It's through breaking out of your bunker once it's locked. So you're asking, how do you actually lock the bunker? Well, here we go. 
You're about to get off for the day, or for example, you're about to get raided. This is what you'll want to do. You'll grab the resources from inside your oh shit set. Now, using a building plan, place a half wall at the beginning and the bottom of your bunker. Upgrade it from twig to wood, and make sure you face the hard side towards you, outside of the bunker. You don't want the hard side facing towards the inside of your bunker, or it's going to take you forever to chop out of it, okay? Now, the next step, all you have to do is take your building plan out, floor triangle, and upgrade this to armored. Now, looking at this, you're probably just wowing right now. I know, you're impressed. It's hard to believe how amazing this base actually is. You've just made this into a 16 rocket raid, simply just to get into this, this room alone. Now, the limit to this is really endless, and I'm going to show you how to make a triple bunker and even go further than that. But again, we're going to do the same thing in here, just imagining that it was a raid. You know, we're about to lose our base, you want to make it as expensive as possible, or defend. A lot of people will give up when they see these kind of base designs, because they're just way too expensive and cost inefficient to get in. So again, upgrade to wood. Rotate the hard side towards you, jump out, floor triangle, upgrade to sheet metal, done. Now you have a fully metalized bunker in addition to your armored bunker. Close your doors, and you can see this is going to be a pretty expensive raid for anyone coming in. Now, if you want to go one step further to be a real dickhead, I've done this in the past a lot. You can add triangular floors, so if someone does try and do top-down raid on you, they're going to have to go through at least doors, more floors, anything. Anything to make this more expensive is your goal. Getting back inside of your bunker is a pretty easy process. As long as you have a bag inside, all you have to do is F1 kill and respawn. Remember when we labeled our bunkers, this makes it really easy to determine which bag to spawn into. So, we're going to spawn into bunker 1, we're going to grab our hatchets, and here we go. A really, the auto farm key, uh, which is a really helpful keybind, really does work in this. Check this out. No hands. Boom. So, as you can see, the process to get in and out of your bunker doesn't take that long. I'd say between two and three minutes tops and just slightly over one metal hatchet. You can always repair these to keep the same amount in your base. But that is the premise on how a stability bunker works and that's how you get in and out. Now, if you wanna get extra sweaty, you can upgrade this half wall to stone and pick it out. Now, keep in mind that's gonna take you a lot longer to break out, but you know, some of us are real greasy and sweaty and stinky like that. We like to get fucking nasty like that, boys. So let's get in there. Let's get fucking nasty. You know what I'm saying? Upgrade that half wall to stone and get greasy. The upkeep for the double bunker minimalist variant of this base is still very, very low. You're looking at slightly over 2,000 stone, just slightly under 600 metal frags, and slightly under 30 high quality day on a vanilla server for upkeep. Now that's very low when you factor in how secure this base is. Keep in mind, you do need a little bit of high qual and or metal to secure your bunker. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned there's a triple bunker variation of this base. So I'm gonna show you that now. Now, the thing this triple bunker trades off is early base security for long-term functionality and storage. So you have to make a decision, you know, do you have enough resources to A, build this base, finish this base and upkeep this base. The triple bunker variation can get a lot bigger, especially once you're done honeycombing it, but it can allow you the ability to just endlessly build your base out and up, and it can become quite a powerhouse. I've had this base honeycomb to the point where it was 70 plus rockets to do. It's extremely expensive when you're considering raiding a solo player, and the likelihood of someone doing it is extremely low. So let's get right into it. If you just watch the double bunker, this is almost identical to the double bunker. The only thing that is different is that we're gonna add three lockable bunkers and the entryway of the base is gonna be a little different. So follow along. We're gonna build the beginning almost the exact same as the rest. So initial foundation, we're gonna build our main bunker first. This is our TC. So triangle, triangle, raise foundation. Walls once again. Place your TC before you upgrade this. I can't stress this enough. If you don't place your TC correctly, you're going to have a really bad day. And you're going to waste a lot of high qual. Nobody wants to waste high qual. 
So anyways, place your TC, place it in the back left corner properly as you can. Your next step is going to be upgrading everything to high qual. Or at the very minimum, steel. I mean, truth be told, I've done this base entirely in stone to start. Doesn't really matter. As long as you have the base up and it's functional, that's all that matters. So, armor, armor. All right, so here's where it gets a little different. So, we're going to make a drop down here. A drop down here, okay? Now, a sunken triangle foundation on both sides. Now, both of these are going to be bunkers. So, once again, sunken, sunken. You can pre-honeycomb the back of these because this is where your bunker is going to be. You might as well do it now. One more raised foundation here. And now, go ahead and get the walls in. Now, considering this is your bunker too, if you remember, I personally advise you to upgrade this to metal off the bat, at least sheet metal. This gives you another relatively strong storage space to use. Do this in sheet metal as well. You can always keep these uh, normal foundation stone. All right. These aren't as much important as the other bunkers, so you can just leave these stone off the bat. Now, this is obviously going to be another bunker. Again, if you have the means to do so, start it in sheet metal. If you don't, then just leave it stone. This is typically where I keep really low tier stuff, um, less important things, but again, this is a bunker, so it's worth upgrading. If you have the metal to upgrade it off the bat, do it. The rest, you just want to make stone. So, finish these last little open rooms. So, this can be a drop loot or a uh, shelf. This can be a furnace room, workbench, whatever you want. Now, the last thing you want to do is place a wall up here. You remember we had a wall kind of on this part? This is how this base is different. See, our front door used to be this, but this triple bunker, it kind of utilizes some of this wasted space and maximizes space efficiency. Again, though, right now, the only thing that's holding anyone from breaking into both of these bunkers on the left and the right is one triangle foundation. So that's what we're going to look to improve. So for the sake of easy understanding for everybody watching, we're just going to finish the base uh, to the point where, you know, we have the bunker left. So let's finish honeycombing all of this for now. Half walls and stone is more than enough for this. But again, if you have metal to use, especially above your bunker, I suggest doing it. Right now, let's just assume we don't. We'll just use stone. Now, I explained why I leave these open for the, for at least the start. Um, a lot of us don't have the metal to upgrade all of this right off the bat. And if you honeycomb the exterior of these, you won't be able to access these back walls. So it's good to leave these open until you absolutely have the resources or absolutely need to seal it. So the last thing we're going to do is... Actually, we're going to finish this cylindrical roof in steel. I've mentioned the reasoning for this before. It's just so somebody can't splash this as easily and break your whole roof down in one shot. I do the same to the wall frames. I like upgrading all of these to metal. Heavy grenade launchers have really ruined rust and splash damage as a result is really scary and unpredictable now. So I've personally seen an entire, you know, damage done from the opposite side of a ceiling with HDLs. I won't let it happen again. It's very inexpensive to upgrade these from sheet metal and it'll definitely prevent something terrible from happening like someone breaking in and all your doors collapsing at once. So one last half wall on this final bunker. 
All right, now let's put some doors up. So here is, again, the vulnerable point of this base right now. So if you understand bunkers, you can look at this and you can tell if someone removed this triangular foundation, they'd be able to just walk into this bunker and walk into this bunker, even if they're sealed from the top. So how we're going to counter that, and this is where you have to decide whether you want extra storage space, space efficiency, or you want extra stability and security in your base. Now, there's two ways of counteracting this, but one is a lot more expensive and you're a lot more reliant to building your base out. So let's go with the low cost, you know, um, security, if will. So we're gonna go and we're gonna add another foundation, a raised foundation outside to this. Now, this isn't exactly that special and I would even advise putting this as stone. The next step is simple. We're gonna put two lower triangular foundations down here on the ground, here and here. Upgrade these two to stone, as they're not incredibly important. Now the final thing we're gonna do is add a wall. And as you can see, we've made a little bit of a sunken room. Now this is where you can put furnaces or whatever you like in the end. Now what we're gonna make last year is our airlock. So a lower triangle foundation, or square foundation rather, and then two sunken triangles. Wall frame all the way around. Wall frame here. And I would just make all this stone, unless you're just swimming in metal, there's really no point, at least immediately to upgrade this to metal. Anything that's being used as honeycombing, however, basically to protect people from getting into your base, you're going to want to upgrade. So this definitely could be upgraded at some point, although it's not really pressing right off the bat. Basically, we've covered this up now, so it's not like it's just one foundation that's exposed to the furthermost exterior of the base to get into loot. Now it's covered up. Do you follow what I'm saying? So what we're going to do now is we're going to build this up into a functional airlock. We're going to add a couple more half walls. And this is where you can make a decision. Now, you can leave this, you can put a triangle here and make a roof, or you can just leave this open. Now, I advise putting a triangle because what this is gonna give you an opportunity to do is store some more loot up here. And this is all about space efficiency. This whole game, build base building is all about space efficiency and securing your loot in the most, you know, resource efficient and security efficient, if you will, uh, way possible. So this is how the base is going to look to this point. Add a couple more ceiling pieces here. There's more further upgrades. You can go metal with this. It probably doesn't hurt. here now this is where you need to make a decision now this piece here is where i personally like to put a ladder hatch a ladder hatch will give you the ability to start building this base up tall and this is a perfect spot to put it basically all you're going to have here there's going to be a shop front here and a sheet metal door so if someone wants to bust through your ladder hatch into your airlock they're not exactly fast tracking anything they're just avoiding going through one sheet metal door so it really doesn't give them any benefit so if you have a ladder hatch Rough it in or install it right away. If you don't, I'd recommend leaving this stone for sure because you're going to want to bust through this and upgrade this at some point. You don't have to, but it definitely, if you're, if you're planning on building a huge base, this is the place to put your ladder hatch right here. All right, so at this point, you're kinda, your base is looking like this. Now, you can tell this is a pretty elaborate airlock system, but nobody's going to just bust through this with a couple of satchels, okay? Especially once you get garage doors and everything working in here. It's going to be expensive. Now, if you really want to be a wrinkle dink, you can also add wall frames to this side. And I would definitely suggest you do so. This is going to make it even more expensive. And it's going to defend your loot from someone just walking in your airlock and busting in and grabbing it. So we've got two different rooms here. Both of which will be covered by a garage door in the near future.
All right, so let's get some doors and windows on. Get this base secured. Now, when you're placing a shop front, they have durability the exact same regardless of how you place them, but you'll have a little more space if you place this flange away from you. So place them like this. You'll thank me later. Again, swinging door as your furthermost exterior door always, unless you're crazy. All right, ladder hatch. Now here's another trick. When you're setting up your ladder hatch, don't have the ladder swinging down like this because if you go up the ladder, you might just fly right off your roof. So I suggest putting it on an angle like this because when you go up, you'll just pop up the side. You're not gonna run right over the edge. You're learning here. I know you're learning. Don't act like you're not learning. You're impressed. All right, so now let's start adding some garage doors. Now this is where this base gets extremely expensive, extremely quick. You're gonna get a just of it, like, you're gonna get the just of this. The more garage doors you place in your base, the higher chance you have of winning the game. So let's add some more. Now we're basically back to the same setup as our previous base. There's a couple minor changes. Now you're going to have one bunker over here, which is what I would suggest labeling bunker number three. Or number two, depending upon how you want to look at it. Let's keep it number two. Everyone likes a good number two. So bunker number two. There we go. Name this one bunker number three for ease of operation. Bunker. Three. Moving back out to the airlock. We'll place our furnaces down. Now you should be able to fit three in here. Sometimes it takes a little bit of patience, but they will fit. All right. A nice touch I like to make in here as well is you can place a fridge on this kind of useless spot on the wall. There we go. More functional. You can even place a chair right beside that outhouse. Perfect. Reason being, you can eat something, get to 100 health, and then sit down and heal up to, to full really quickly. Or a repair bench over here if you want. And this is just my kind of style of doing this. Now, this next part is entirely up to you. Personally, I've already explained my reasonings why. I like to put storage closer to the door because this is typically where I'll put lower tier items that I'm just dropping off or want to just, you know, get rid of quickly or pick up quickly. So I put another loot room right here. This back area is where I typically place my workbench and extra furnaces or repair benches, research tables, whatever, boxes. You can really do anything. You can make this another loot room too if you wanted to. Now, personally, I suggest pulling the workbench as close to the foundation as possible. That way you don't have to go all the way inside this room to craft stuff. You can just kind of do so right up here. Makes things a lot more time efficient for you. So I mentioned before, if I'm planning on keeping this base for a while or if I'm doing really well in the wipe and I'm planning on honeycombing my base up, building it out, whatever. It's good to upgrade this as best you can before you seal this up. Now, sheet metal is a good, you know, rule of thumb. I don't usually go past sheet metal, but this whole exterior of the base is gonna be uniform by the time I'm done with it, and it's not gonna stand out like the loot room is under here. So, once you have this set up as fold, honeycomb just like this. Now, these ones aren't as important, but again, all honeycomb and metal, all of this, um, before the end of the white. Done. And now you have a little more defense against somebody bursting into your base with very little cost. Looking around, you can see this base is pretty solid. What we have is three independently locked bunkers with a minimum of four large boxes in each. Now, if you're considering this is a solo base, that's a pretty sufficient amount of loot room. And on top of that, it's very secure. Now, someone's gonna have to break into three unique bunkers to access all your loot. And that's assuming they're metal and armor. Now, when these are all armored, 
you do the math, this is an extremely expensive raid. We're talking over 45 rockets to raid you out entirely. And that's excluding the doors and the honeycombing. So this base is extremely strong when it's finished. That's a thick ass bar, damn! So here's how this spectacular triple bunker base should look like to this point. Now I explained why I wait to honeycomb these and why I upgrade them to sheet metal before I upgrade the exterior honeycombing. Again, the reason being is you won't have time, you won't have the ability to access it. So it's best to upgrade it before you do the rest of the exterior honeycombing. But as you can see, this is a very secure base. It still doesn't have an enormously imposing footprint on the map. And for a solo base, this is definitely going to discourage any potential raiders. Unless they're going to farm up a ton of boom, they're not going to raid you. So our next inevitable step is going to be completing the exterior honeycombing. Now that we've got everything upgraded inside, and we have everything that we're going to upgrade in the future done, it's time to basically give a uniform and slightly less imposing look to this base. Now, I know adding more doesn't really make sense to give a less imposing look to it, but if you have a lot of exposed high quality and you have a lot of exposed sheet metal on your base, it's gonna give you the look that you've got a lot of stuff inside of it. What this does is it gives a more kind of uniform look to the base and says, hey, maybe this guy's a lot of stone, but you know, to the glancing eye, you're not gonna see a whole bunch of expensive resources used in the construction of this base. Now, again, I suggest doing this at night. We're trying to build at a time where you can do all of this in one step so nobody can tell there's armor behind here. You definitely don't want to leave this exposed for days on end or especially overnight or anything like that. People are going to be able to identify where your loot room is and they're going to go after it. So try and do this all as early as possible. Get this done as quickly as you can and don't let anybody know the layout of your base. So, here is where you should be at to this point. I mean, this base has a really nice look to it, regardless. But what we're going to do now is we're going to address these top exposed honeycomb layers, and we're going to cover all of this up. So, all of this base from the top and the exterior looks relatively uniform, and it'll put a lot more guesswork into someone locating your TC. Our last step is pretty simple and straightforward, and this is, again, more to hide the honeycombing that we're using as opposed to actually honeycombing itself. It's very unlikely someone's going to use these walls to raid through your base. And to be honest, you can skip this step entirely if you want, but I personally think this is a good thing to do. It's going to give that less imposing look to your base that you probably want as a solo player. It's going to give you less enticing look to people looking to raid you. And all in all, you know, if nothing else, it will make your base more expensive to raid. But good thing to keep in mind, um, it's going to make your base a lot more expensive to maintain as well. So once we're done all this, the last thing that I'll typically do when I'm using this base design is I will upgrade all of these to high quality. Um, I don't even really care if this is exposed. Most people walking by can already see the metal. Most people who look at this base and aren't experienced and are thinking about raiding this will probably try and splash the center of this. So if you upgrade this to high wall, it's going to force them to either do walls or doors, which is going to make this base tremendously expensive for them to raid. So if you've come to the conclusion that this is the best base in the entire video game, you're absolutely right. It's probably the best base you've ever seen in your life, and it's okay to feel that way. I feel the same. Look at and gaze at its magnificence. Look at its OCD friendly symmetry. It's beautiful, okay? Don't hold me back. Go ahead and pop a smile right now. Look me straight in the eyes and pop a smile, all right? It's a great base, you know it, I know it, everybody knows it. When it comes to building this base up vertically, the sky's the limit, truly. Now, that ladder hatch allows you to build a secure entryway onto your roof and you can truly build, you know, like two, three, four floors on top of this base. Personally, I've put three floors on top of this base with a heli tower on top, and it was one of the best wipes I ever had. There's tons of room in this base. It's super secure. Once you put a second floor on this base, it's definitely worth upgrading all of this to high quality. This base kicks ass. I love it. 
I've only been successfully offline in the space twice in a year and a half of using it. And I know for a fact that the, the group that did raid me used over 70 rockets. So it's a very, very cost effective base. Incredibly expensive to raid. It's incredibly secure. And it's really fun to fight out of. I've defended an online raid in this base and it was not easy for the opposing party, believe me. So just to confirm, the TC upkeep on a vanilla server for the triple bunker fully honeycomb base in its current state is 3,600 stone, 30 high qual, and 1,800 metal. Now, if you factor in the initial construction cost, yeah, it's a little high to build, but once this base is actually built, it's incredibly strong and it's relatively low cost to maintain. Another thing worth mentioning is you're always gonna wanna remember that you need high qual or sheet metal to bunker your base. It's not that expensive, but you do need it. So factor that in as well.